Hey, it's Kat again, looking at animation using timers again. So in the last tutorial, we got a ball moving along the screen, and that was not very exciting. Well, it was that we got to do animation, but really not that exciting. What we're going to do is draw a ball inside the rectangle, and we're going to make the ball, you know, bounce around the screen. So my little dotty line is a, you know, a vague idea of, of how the ball would move. That gave you an idea of what I wanted to do, but didn't really give you any detail. So we would animate the ball as we did before. So we would draw it and we would give it an X and a Y velocity. Now to get the ball bouncing around the screen, we need to know um, basically the X and the Y of our rectangle. So basically we need to know it at every point. So as the ball comes across the screen, we want to say if the ball's X is greater than, so this one's the ball, if the ball's X is greater than the X of the rectangle, we want to change its direction. So basically we take the velocity, so if this is our velocity, we keep adding to the x variable until it gets to the wall. And then what we want to do is we want to start subtracting that same velocity to make it bounce in the other direction. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. And now to use another color, um, what we want to do, if the ball happens to bounce off the bottom, we want to be checking the ball's y against the y of the bottom of the rectangle. Okay, so we want to check, uh, I'll just write this on a new screen. Okay, so here's my little applet. And we want the ball being able to bounce around. So I'll just write down a little list of variables that we would be using. Okay, so you'd be needing to keep track of the balls X and Y, the velocity that it's traveling at, which we're not changing that velocity, it's staying the same, but we still need to store it somewhere. And we'd be testing against the left, the top, the right, and the bottom of the rectangle. So let's look at what you would be doing for testing against the right edge of the rectangle. So you'd be just saying if the ball x is greater than or equal to the right edge, we want to basically change the velocity to be the opposite of what it is. So we say ball, and this is the x, remember it's traveling across, x velocity equals negative ball x velocity. So it's going to start going the opposite direction. Um, just to test the, what will we test now? We'll test the top, just so I can show you that one as well. So if we were testing against the top, we would be checking for if the ball y is less than or equal to the top. So remember, if we're testing for the top or the left, we're testing less than. And if we're testing for right or bottom, we're testing for more than. Um, because remember, the top left is 0, 0. So if the ball y is less than or equal to the top, we want to change the velocity. We want to change the direction. Um, so this time we are changing the ball y velocity to be minus the ball y velocity. Now, in theory, if we write one of these statements for each direction, so left, right, top, bottom, we should be able to design a ball that bounces around the screen. So let's go into the computer and give it a whirl. Okay, so I'm in Eclipse now, um, and all I've done so far is copy all of the Timer 1 code and paste it into a new class and called it Timer 2. So I'm now going to start off with a few basic things before I go on to worrying about the ball actually bouncing around the rectangle. So first of all, I'm actually going to make a little change to the ball X and Y. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create an array called ball, which stores both of those values. Um, so I think we had it as 10 and 10. So position 0 in the array is referring to the x, and position 1 is referring to the y. 
Then I'm going to do the same with the velocity. Um, I'll put two different values in there then. Just uh, shake things up a little bit. Uh, we'll keep the refresh rate. What I'm also going to do now is set a few variables to create the rectangle. So I'm going to have one called size and I'm going to set it to be 200. Then I'm going to have the left edge of the rectangle and I'm going to set that to 5. Uh, I'm going to have the top. Set that to 5. Now for the right and the bottom, I'm actually going to base those off the left side plus the size. There is a method to the madness uh, and it's to do with having variables that you can refer back to easily. Okay, plus size. I'm going to copy that, paste it down here. Rectangle bottom is going to be rectangle top plus the size, so it's going to be square shape, not actually a rectangle if you want to go with the traditional term. Then I've got to change these guys because they're having errors. So we're going to refer to ball position zero is the X, remember? And the same then counts for the velocity. Um, I'm going to call it ball velocity. Now these aren't, they're not really required changes, but they mean that by grouping the information together, uh, it's a little bit easier to manage rather than having so many different variables. Okay, so all those ones are then referring to that. Then we're going to fill the oval of ball zero to ball one. Okay. So we might also take this opportunity to draw that rectangle. So I'll go, I'm going to draw the rectangle before I draw the oval. I'm going to set the color to black. Then I'm going to draw the rectangle, so g.drawRect. It takes a number of parameters, so it takes the x and the y, the width and the height, not the right and the bottom. Okay, It'll take the size. So we're going to have rect left, rect top, size, and size. Okay, now that little, I get that Eclipse is being helpful, but sometimes it's actually not that helpful. Uh, I'm going to change the color of the ball. Uh, not draw, we're going to set color to color dot, ooh, what's a color we can pick? Let's go with magenta, like magenta. Okay, now if I run this, I should see the ball moving. It should be purple. It should start at the top left corner and it should animate towards the bottom right corner. Uh, I should see the rectangle of the ball. The ball should move. That's it. It won't be bouncing off anything, obviously, because we haven't put any checks in for that. So there we go. The ball moves. Moves at a different trajectory than before because we changed the velocity. Um, in init, I might just use the command set size so that I can see my whole applet when I run it. So I'm just going to quickly run that. Okay. So now we want to start thinking about that rectangle, making it bounce around. And it's this bit of code that we sort of want to wrap it around. So what I might do is I might actually take that out and put it into a method. So I'm going to have a ball bounce method. Okay, so I'm going to select that code. I'm going to cut it. Now I'm pretty much done with paint, so I'll just collapse that. I'm going to write public void bounce ball. And I'm going to paste that code in. And then what I want to say is if ball at zero is, what did we say, less than or equal to zero, 
we want to change its velocity to be the other direction. So then we set ball underscore velocity zero to be equal to negative ball velocity zero. So we're just changing its direction. So that's checking for the left edge. How about we check the right edge? So we're asking if that is greater than or equal to, we called it, oh, we shouldn't have checked for, rect, for zero, we should have checked for rect left. We're going to check this one against rect right. And it's going to do exactly the same thing inside that code. It's going to change direction if it hits. Then we're going to copy that. And we're going to change these to be ones. So remember that zeros refer to the x and ones refer to the y. We're checking if it's less than or equal to the top and greater than or equal to the bottom. Okay, let's run it and keep our fingers crossed. Ball bounce is undefined. Oh, because I gave it two different names. There we go. Now oh, the errors spitting out at us. Okay, so let's run that and see what happens. Fingers crossed. Okay, do you see the problem? Now this is going to, going to be easier to draw for you. Okay, so we've got our applet and we've got a ball. Now when we drew the ball, we drew it from the X and the Y width and height. So when we're testing against these guys, the X and the Y of the ball is that edge. But if we bring the ball over here, the X and the Y is over here. So what we need to do is we need to add on the width and the height of the ball in our test to test against the right and the bottom edge of the ball instead of the top left corner of the ball. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. It just means that we need to change just two of our statements. Okay, so the left edge and the top edge were fine because they were the top and left of the ball. What we need to worry about is the right and the bottom. So we have the right, but we want to minus off the size of the ball, which was, oh, where did I hide that? I hid that in paint, which was 20. So I can minus off 20. Now, if you're thinking in terms of common sense, we should actually replace that with a variable. Maybe we should do that quickly. So let's go int ball size equals 20. So we'll just copy ball size. Paste it in there, in there, in there, and in there. That means that by using a variable, we only have to change it in one spot instead of everywhere. Uh, I've just realized that I've put this into the top instead into the bottom. Okay, so we'll try and run that now. And hopefully it will look like it's actually bouncing off the edges rather than sinking in. Okay, so all we do is change the velocity by taking the opposite of what it was when it hits the walls. So hopefully with this you'll be able to now go and make some other cool things. Have fun!